Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna try and speed paint these nine uh, Chaos Warriors to match this one here. Scruffy Crow. That is some nerdy shit right there, buddy. I like that. So this is the guy we're looking to match uh, that I've painted up similar to the rest of the Chaos Warriors in Miami. One of the ways we're gonna try and speed this up is by just using these paints. So we've got uh, the armor's gonna be gray. These are just gonna go on the base. Uh, we've got some metallics for the armor and weapons, uh, a couple of washers, uh, a couple of browns for uh, leather parts, uh, black for neatening up the armor, and white is literally just used on the skulls there. These guys are quite simple models, so they should paint up quite quickly. Uh, so nine of them shouldn't be a problem to batch paint at once. And they're going to make the core of my uh, my latest Warlords of Erewhon army list. Uh, which is going to be a knight's list. I'm out in the garage now, just giving these guys a coat of sand using this PVA and then a quick spray. Clean that edge up and in the sand and repeat. Wax some glue on, clean the edge up in the sand and repeat. Okay, these guys have been sat in the sand for a little while now. I'm just going around the edges of the base again, just neatening those up. So these guys are getting a simple coat of the Halford's Matte Black. Okay, we're going to start by uh, painting the panels in this Mechanica Standard Grey. Now one way to do it would be to go around and just carefully edge highlight all the panels, which is very neat, but very time consuming. So instead, taking a slightly bigger brush and getting it down to a sort of almost a dry brush, but not quite. And I'm just gonna brush that across any raised edges. Now I don't really tend to use dry brushing much anymore, but I've gotta be honest, for this, uh, it's got two, uh, two advantages. One, it's a lot quicker. And two, things like those shoulder pads, it's actually done a little bit of shading for me inside those um, that would be trickier using the uh, the line edge, the edge technique. Um, I still think this is neater, and both techniques have their place. But I think for this, we're gonna use the dry brush method. It's not a true dry brush, I'm just dragging it across the panels purposely so I hit those edges straight on. I can always go back in and uh, highlight any specific lines that I want that I want to sharpen up. Okay, so the dry brush is looking pretty consistent on all of those. And like I said on that back panel, I'm just gonna neaten up some of the lines. You may notice that I'm using uh, my uh, little wet palette here. It's my uh, quick and dirty wet palette. You can see how I made that in this video. One great advantage to batch painting like this that I have found is actually that you start to spot problem areas. Uh, so just the inside of these little armor palette, uh, plates inside there I'm missing uh, and obviously this back panel uh, and then the little back armor plates hit under here um, because these models all nine of them are uh, identical I'm less likely to miss these little problem areas if I see them nine times in a row I know where to look sure I mean it can get a bit boring batch painting <laughs> nine identical figures but there's something Something a bit zen about it. Okay, so the next layer is P3 Pig Iron. These guys have got a small skirt on the front and a larger one on the back here. I've switched to a synthetic brush rather than my uh, sable brush. Uh, I find that's A, because it's cheaper, because my, my type paints do tend to wreck my brushes. Uh, and B, I think they seem to wreck synthetic ones a little bit less. I'm also painting directly out of the pot uh, that's partly because I have watered this paint down in the pot because I always want to use it about the consistency I've got it now. It's rare that I ever want to water a uh, metallic down further than this. That's the silver done, the P3 pig iron. If you're feeling super lazy, you could probably leave these guys here uh, and they are minimally tailed already. But we'll keep on going. Now I'm going to paint all these axe handles in XV88. Next thing is going to be the gold. I'm going to be using Retributor Armour and that's going to go there, there and in the horns. Now with the inside of the horns I've just got... For the inside of the horns I've just got a tiny bit on my brush. I'm sort of stippling that so it stays nice and inside the line. I think this stippling effect achieves two things. One, 
it makes it nice and easy to stay inside the lines. And two, I think it gives that kind of almost gold leafed looking effect that I quite like. Okay, eight more. The next really quick step is gonna be this Celestia Grey and that is going on the uh, skulls on both sides there and that's it. And we're using downward strokes so we don't get too much paint in the eye holes. Okay, next one's a big one. Uh, we're gonna do the gloves, boots, and base in Rhinoxide. Uh, so next step is gonna be a wash of Avdorex Earthshade on the weapon haft, so the gold and the brown, and in their little horns. So just there and there and there. This should be a nice quick one. Splash it on there, around the back. I'm just going for a little dab in the horn there. Wipe off any that's on the surface. And that helps just neaten up the corners a little bit on that and knock that gold back a little tiny bit. Now we're gonna go in with a wash of the Null Nile on all the weapons, chainmail parts, and the little skulls on their badges. Now I'm just gonna use some Games Workshop White Scar to paint in these little icons like that. Beautiful. Next up, Gum Corpse Brown. Uh, and I'm gonna do the first sort of semi-dry brush on the base. Okay, we're going to finish up the bases with a bit of this Menoth white base. And we're just going to go for the lightest of dry brushes here. So next stage is going to be a mix of Rhinox Hide and XV88, uh, which I'm going to do on the gloves and boots like I've done on this one. A half and a half should do it. We're just highlighting these finger lines and the edge of the glove. Just dead obvious highlights. Let's face it, that's all these models have got. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, one of the last colours we're going to use is this P3 Quicksilver, which is similar to sort of old Games Workshop Mithril Silver. And I'm just going to edge highlight each of the axe handles, do the studs, just any of the wear parts, and carefully stipple down the axes. Just going in with the side of my brush. Get a nice bright edge highlight there. This doesn't have to be the neatest thing in the world, because what we're actually trying to replicate is sort of wear patterns. I'm going to do this line between the blade, get the studs in there, that's the basic highlight done and then I'm just going to take the very tip of my brush and we're just going to do these little flicks. I have one or two that go all the way onto the blade. In some cases we're extending the lines Across, across the blade. You can almost make it like little scratches. Wear and tear in the metal. From where they've been smiting the forces of good. While we're at it with the uh, Quicksilver, I, uh, I'm just gonna highlight the very edges of their little chainmail skirts as well. Uh, it's only a subtle little difference, but it's not gonna take me long and kind of uh, think makes a little pop there and all we've got left to do now is neaten up the bases with a bit of this bad and black and here they are all finished up ready to join the rest of my uh, Knights of Chaos army for Warlords of Aeron. At the same time as back to painting those guys I also got this Hero Quest guy done and the champion uh, using the same techniques uh, but with just a little bit more time and care uh, given to this guy to make him look a bit fancier. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.